Hello lovebirds, welcome back to my YouTube channel. So in today's video, we are going to talk about graphic eyeliner and how to make it work for your eye shape, a few tips and tricks on how to get it symmetrical, what kind of products I love best to do this, and just a sh shortcut here and there. First up, I'm going to try out a few new products for my base, so let's get started. All right, I'm going to start off with a primer, which is silicone free by Good Molecules. And uh, this is the first time I'm trying it out. Now, I was a little bit hesitant about trying out new products because of my skin condition. And I don't know if you guys have seen my stories over the past few weeks, but my skin has been breaking out like nothing else. And it's been completely frustrating. And I know a lot of you feel the absolute same. So I went to see a dermatologist at the hospital in Holland. And it turns out it does have somewhat of a hormonal cause. But the effect is that there is a disturbance in my bacterial kind of levels. I don't know how to pronounce it, how to call it. I don't even know what the condition is called. But it is apparently, it happens more often to people who have had the implanon, which is the subdermal implant, or the IUD, Mirena, uh, which is mainly based on progesterone. So um, yeah, I've got a skin condition and now for the next 45 days, I'm going to have to be on antibiotics and put something on my skin, which is just plain methanol, ethanol. Um, it just stings and apparently it just kills all the bacteria. So yeah, I have to be careful, but that's why I went for a good molecules primer. All right, so this is going to be exciting for me because the last time I tried L'Oreal, I think I was in my teens and this was my absolute favorite foundation. So I'm just gonna have to see and find out if I still like it. So because I've been sun tanning, I grabbed the shade 2N and 1.5N on. I just have to figure out which one will suit me best, but I do know I'm definitely a neutral in undertone. Just grabbed a little concealer, foundation, big eye blender brush by Tush because I do not want to go full ham on this foundation. I just want to even out the skin tone a bit. But it does seem to be a perfect shade match. Way to go, L'Oreal. I did not expect to be liking this so much. Because this is a dead-on match. I mean, look at my neck and look at my jawline. This is absolutely perfect. I mean, I've been using some high-end products, but not with every brand you can get a shade match this exact. I remember why I like this so much. I mean, I think I must have worn this without the entirety of my teenage years. But then again, when I was a teenager, I did not have any blemishes at all. Uh, just very deep blue under eye circles. But I've had those since I was a baby, so yeah. I'm pretty damn excited. Shit. Can't swear. Try to avoid the bridge of the nose. So I do do the tip of the nose and I do it between the eyebrows. But I try to leave this a little bit more open because then you get to see my freckles and then it will appear just slightly more natural. 
even though you are wearing a demi covering foundation. I'm just adding a bit more to this area because that will mean I have to use way less concealer. But it's beautiful. It's it's like demi radiant, so it's not a super glowy foundation, but it's not matte either. It's just beautiful. And let's not forget about the ears, because if you have your ears on show like me all of the damn time, you want them to match your skin tone. I do forget, usually. But in this case, I just want it to look seamless. With whatever is left over, I'm just going to grab on to this little area. Because I'm getting a bit of a technic. I don't know if you've heard about this, but it means that you've been looking down at your phone so much that you're starting to get wrinkles right in that area. So yeah, let's do that a little bit. There we go. All right, let's go on to concealer. Now, I've got a beautiful package from Wilma Beauty. Some of the... It's one of those brands that I absolutely love because they've got a shade matching range that is just very easy. So I was sent four concealers and this one is from Fair Lady. And then this one is White Pearl. So these are the lightest ones you can find. Then onto these ones and each range of lightness or darkness has their own color. So it's very easy to pick out and just to find. So I've got the T1 and the T2 from Fair Lady and the T1 and T2 from White Pearl. Now the White Pearl does seem to have a slightly more pink undertone if you can see this compared to this, for example, it just seems a little bit more rosy in undertone, which is great for the under eye area if you have bluer circles. So I'm going to go ahead and take White Pearl and I think I'll grab onto T2 because I'm not that fair at the moment. I'm just going to add a dribble dribble right there. Grab onto one of my favorite brushes, the S160 265. S165 by Cosette. And I'm just going to buff in that concealer. Now that is just the perfect shade difference from the foundation. It's just slightly lighter. It's not like I'm doing a full drag look, just slightly lighter. It's beautifully covering as well. Now for the pimply areas, I'm just gonna grab onto the Fair Lady shades. So let's start with the T2 and see how that will work on my chin, my war zone. I'm happy to say that everything is diminishing nicely, um, but I do have to give it just a few more weeks to let it settle in that the antibiotics do its job and I've been thinking a lot about this because I was so frustrated with my skin and I've been getting help from a skin specialist I've been getting treatments regularly having cleanups and still it just they kept popping on and it just got to a point where it was really, really frustrating to deal with my skin. So that's why I eventually, finally, went to see a dermatologist. And I can really, absolutely recommend anyone to do this because, you know, we are kind of taught to just not whine and bitch about it. You know, it's just pimples. It's not that bad. No one else can see it. Blah, 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 blah. But in truth, it's just awful looking at yourself and feeling shit. Cause sometimes you do feel like absolute shit. 
we've got this many pimples. I've got one right on the tip of my jawline. So I can't actually see it if I don't open my jaw. Just a dab right on there. If anyone is wondering, oh, what the hell is that sound? So my studio is based in an old prison and I do have a lot of neighbours, so not all of the time I can get it to be completely silent, but overall it's really, really quiet here. And I absolutely love that. Yes! Okay, one last thing I'm going to do to my concealer. I'm going to add a little bit of the White Pearl T1 just to fill in those little under eye ridges right there. And it's just slightly lighter than the T2, not by much. But I just want to fill in that little crevice with a little bit of light. Uh, let me know in the comment section if you want me to do like a non-touring video again, um, just to explain the way I approach contour and non-tour on skin. So I think that would make a nice video too. All right, one more thing I got from Uoma Beauty is the Double Take Sculpt and Strobe Duo Stick. And I'm also using the color White Pearl. So it's got a contouring shade on one end and it is nice and ashy in undertone for all of the fair ladies amongst us. But I'm happy to say that they have these in all kinds of shade ranges. So, for example, I've got this one. This is the Fair Lady. And it's just a little darker. And a little warmer in undertone. So I'm going to take this really tiny brush. If I can read it correctly, it's this number 32 back tush. And it's just the teeniest, tiniest shader brush, face shader brush. So I'm going to grab onto a bit of product and apply a bit of contour. And I just love going in with a tinier brush because it gives you the ability to be precise. So if you go in and you just smash on that stick with a and then start blending it out. Obviously, it's going to transfer down onto the areas that you don't want any contour. And then you have to clean it up again. So, yeah, I'd rather be precise about it than go back in with more and more product. Also, a bit on the temple. Now, with whatever is left on the brush, I'm just going to apply a bit to the forehead, but not much. A little bit on the jawline. I have to be careful to not mess up my concealer. I usually just leave out the brushes I use or have used for a previous step to kind of go back in and clean up if necessary or blend it in a little bit more because you don't want that temple to be that obvious. There we go. Just a bit of shading on that nose. Towards the brow bone. I'm just going to go in with the highlighter side of this stick, which is just stunning, kind of champagne-y. I'm just going to apply a bit to the top part of the cheek. You know what I love most about this stick is that it's really hard to overdo it. It's just a very subtle sheen and it is such a beautiful colour. It's just really difficult to overdo it. I'm just going to set the whole thing with a little bit of the Chanel Poudre Libre Universelle 
in 20 clear. I'm using the 822 brush just to tap in a bit of powder right on the under eye and the sides of the nose because I don't want the sides of the nose to be super shiny. So I'm just going to set it right here. right in that T-zone. Just a little bit on that lower half. I'm not trying to cut the cheekbone, I'm just setting the jawline in place. All right, to warm up the complexion a little bit more, I'm going in with a beautiful matte bronzer by Gum De, a beautiful brand from Denmark, I believe, or Stockholm, Copenhagen, so Denmark. So I'm just going to warm up the cheekbone area using the Tush number no. three, because it's just nice and fluffy. So it will be able to take the fact that there is no powder underneath and distribute that product just I know I say that word a lot, but I only say it if I mean it. I'm going to add a touch onto the bridge of the nose. There we go. Nice and warmed up. Now we are moving on to the eye area. Important, at least it helps in my case, is to do the brows first because None of our brows are very symmetrical. We try to get them as symmetrical as we can before studying on an eye look, but it gives you a little bit of a reference to where the eyeliner should go. So yeah, I'm going to use the Precisely My Brow uh, by Benefit, and they've got a new color called gray, which is perfect for me because as you can see, this is just gray. I mean, I found my first actual gray hairs on my head. <laughs> Which is a great news after just turning 30. <laughs> but yeah, um, I think I am destined to become grey very soon and I am very ashy in undertone. Like both of my brothers who are 34 and 36, almost 35 and 37, um, they are both quite grey for their age, but it suits them really well. And I haven't decided yet on what to do with my grey hair. As long as I keep it bald, I think I'm just going to keep it the way it is. And just rock it grey, because who's going to dye this shit? I've done that for years and it just hurts. I'm not going to do it again. But yeah, then when it gets a little bit longer, that will be an issue. But I never change the top part of my brow, so it's a good reference in terms of shape where you want to go and then I can just fill in the bottom where it's necessary. Luckily these little buggers are growing back as well. Alrighty then, once you figured out your brows I'm just going to set them with a little bit of 24 hour brow setter then we can get to work with a graphic liner which I'm very excited about. All right, it is time to get to work with a graphic eyeliner look. Now, I'm going to use a few products, which is a waterproof black eye pencil, a liquid eyeliner pen, and maybe, but probably, a black eyeshadow. So, I'm just going to start off with the waterproof black eye pencil. Okay, so there are two that I absolutely love, which is the Delilah Eyeline Longwear Retractable Pencil. This is the one pencil that actually doesn't transfer down if I use it on my top waterline. And then I've got a second one, which is the, the Saint du Regard Waterproof Eye Pencil in number one by Wiesel Beauty. Now, I love this one because it is a little bit more creamy and it's a little bit more easy to apply. Then I've got a very specific eyeliner brush by Charlotte Tilbury. It just says eyeliner um, but it is a little bit more chunky and a little bit more pointy 
perfect for waterproof eye pencil. And the one thing you cannot go without is a good eyeliner. Now, everyone's got their favorites and Surat is definitely my favorite. So this is called the Autographique eyeliner. And um, this one actually is very pointy in the tip. It is a brush pen, not a felt tip. And it does have refills, so it actually works with a little ink refill. And uh, I think this is perfect. I think more brands should do it this way. Let's zoom you guys in so we can see a little bit more of what is going on. Welcome to my face. First up, because this is bothering the crap out of me, I'm going to change this pimple because it just protrudes from the skin a little bit too much. I'm gonna transform it into a mole. It's a big mole, but it was also a very big pimple. All right, very first thing we are going to do is kind of map out where the shape has to go. And now trust me, I mess up nine times out of 10, but that's why we've got makeup remover and Q-tips. So yeah, I'm gonna map out the shape of the eyeliner first by placing something a little bit more straight and see where the angle of your lower waterline goes towards. Kind of the same with mapping out your brows, you know, you use the tip of your nose to find the beginning, the end, the arch. So this is also the same. You kind of want to follow the angle of where your lower waterline is going towards. Make an imaginary line upwards. This is kind of the line I'm going towards, just going to dot right there, because that will be the tip of the graphic eyeliner. I've placed this one a little bit lower than this one, so I'm gonna have to do that again. This looks a lot more symmetrical, but now this one's a little bit more towards the inside, that one is a little bit more towards the outside. But I can get over that by just going outwards and this one a little bit further down. Next thing you wanna do is place a dot exactly above your iris. So you kind of wanna keep an eye on your iris, your brows, and to find a spot right in between your crease and your brows, above your iris, where you wanna place that dot. Now for me, it's quite obvious because I've got a little bit of a line going right here. And I think that is exactly where my brow bone is, which it is. So that is exactly where I wanna place that dot. I do have a tendency to pull up this brow so I try to relax as much as I can when I place those dots. And when I do relax my brows, it actually makes sense. As you can see in this little hollow of your eye in your nose, just right in that inner corner, you can see this line going. That is kind of where I want it to end. So I go towards the beginning of my brow and towards that hollow and place a dot right there. Now the lighter you can make that dot, the easier it will be for you to remove or readjust anything. Also, no one is exactly symmetrical. So just look at it and then we're gonna sketch it out and you can make any kind of revision before going full Monty with the liquid eyeliner. All right, now the one thing you wanna do is sketch out your shape. For most people, there's no way in hell you can do that shape exactly right in one go. So what I do is I grab onto a waterproof eyeliner, a tiny little smudger brush by Charlotte Tilbury, and I grab onto a bit of product, not too much, and I just start sketching out that shape. Because if there's anything you want to revise, it's so much easier to do 
compared to a liquid eyeliner. Now I can already tell that I've made this curve way too curvy because then it will never end up into that inner hollow. This is just a dry Q-tip and if you feel like you've made the wrong shape or the wrong decision, then just grab onto that dry Q-tip and just wipe away that eye pencil that you've used. And there is absolutely no nothing to be stressed about. Back in with my foundation brush. So let's try this again. I feel like it needs to make a dip before it curves so that it's not just one round arch. I've seen that I've already put that little dot too low for it to connect. So I decide to adjust and go above it a bit, but at least we know where the high point of this graphic liner should be. And that is the part where we tip. Also, this dot, fun idea, it's not working. See, because if I will connect this to there, it will be too long. So what I'm gonna do is just follow my anatomy and have it finish here. I've also put the high point there almost, so I just diminish that a bit, making sure that it stays there above the iris. All right, let's connect the outer corner to the tip. And I go in gently first, because I do have a tendency to round that thing off a lot. And sometimes it's just about positioning your hand correctly to be able to finish that shape. See, that's quite round. I don't want to have it that round. Now, this is where the Q-tips come in. So I've got these. These are the My Mini On Point Buds by My Kit Co. And these are so incredibly sharp. You will be able to finish everything so razor sharp, you have no idea. So I just go in and I take a bit of that roundness away from the shape. Just wanted to go up a bit more straight. Now obviously this shape doesn't have to be the final shape, it just has to map out where you want to go with your liquid eyeliner later on. Let's do the other side. Now the one thing you have to do is really look at those shapes and figure out for yourself is this where I want my final shape to go. Now, obviously, a 100% symmetrical eyeliner is really, really difficult to do, especially if you are not symmetrical yourself, which no one is. So just try to really look at it straight on and figure out where you might have gone a little bit off. So for example, when I first did my shape, I had a little too much volume here whilst I wanted my volume to be here. See, this is just not right. Now, don't worry too much about the makeup that is here because we can clean that up with a flat shader brush and a little bit of concealer. This is just your initial shape and figuring out if it's the right one. If you do have that shape, it is time to go in with liquid eyeliner. And I know how scary that is. Um, nine times out of 10, I just skip this area, because I want to keep it as open and as friendly and as fun as possible. And um, this can often cause something to stamp upwards. So I just skip that part and maybe just take along that outer corner. But first let's do the graphic shape and see where it takes us. Both come with a magnifying mirror and that is what I usually go for when doing a eyeliner because I want it to be so sharp you are confused and think it's Photoshop. That's where I want to go. So yeah, let's get in and do the eyeliner. <gasps> this also makes me nervous, just so you know.
I'll just go into the center of that eyeliner first and then I'm going to, because you can never do it like, but then I go in and revise everywhere while, where I've gone down a bit too much or up a bit too much. Um, so yeah, just follow the shape first and then we'll finalize. There, looks like a hot mess. But now we can start by filling in all the details, all the gaps, all the wonky spots. So don't stress about it. Graphic eyeliner just takes a shitload of time. Also, one of the reasons I actually love to use this one is because it doesn't skip over the skin that much. So it really glides over the skin. So you don't really have to worry about getting those jagged edges. Now also, because I'm doing this on camera, I don't have anything to put my elbow up against. But if you are doing this at home in front of a mirror, it's the best thing to just put a pile of magazines in front of you. So you can actually put your elbow on top of there so you have a really steady hand to work with. Now also, one thing, if you are not a genius with liquid eyeliner, don't do it. Just do the whole thing with a waterproof eye pencil and a smudgy little brush like this and just smudge it in and clean it up with a Q-tip where you want to clean it up. Also, the Q-tips from Muji are amazing to do this. Now, also one of those amazing things about these graphic 60s kind of eyeliners is that anyone can do them. So even if you have hooded eyes, you can just go above your crease, avoid the whole outer corner area where you have that fold and just paint through it. Now your best friend in this case is Bioderma and the cotton pads or the cotton buds. Just grab onto a tiny bit and you see I've gone a little too low here. I can just adjust that so easily with these babies. I'm going to apply a colour in the centre anyway, so I'm going to clean it up later on um, with the eyeshadow, but still it's quite nice to have that shape in place. You can see how sharp and detailed these babies are. Also here, there's a little dip. I do not want. I feel like I'm missing a bit of volume right here. So I go back in with my eyeliner and this is just what happens with these kind of things. You just go back and forth between adding and removing. Um, but that's just the way it goes when you're doing graphic eyeliner. there. That seems like it's an even width throughout. All right, I'm gonna finish up the other eye and get back to you. I won't let you see and watch this whole mess. All right, loves, now that you've got your eyeliner in place, we're gonna continue with a little bit of an easier task. And that is a little bit of liquid eyeshadow. Now I'm using this one by Kaya. It's called the Moon Crystal. It's a sparkling eye pigment. The color is number five, Mystique. The last time I did it with the jeans blue one, and this one is purple to match my outfit and backdrop. So I'm going to go in with a lip brush because I do not want to mess up this eyeliner now that it's on. So I'm going to grab a little bit of that product onto the brush and I'm just going to apply it to the inner corner. Now these dry out so you'll be able to pack on the color even more intensely than you're doing now. So you just go in layer by layer. 
Nasrat is able to handle something, but you kind of want to be careful where you place that liquid eyeshadow. And I find that lip brushes work perfectly for this because you want to have that really clear edge around your lips as well. So lip brushes tend to be really thin and flat and rounded off really beautifully. So I'm just going to pack on a bit more product to get that really gleaming in a corner. I'm packing it on quite thickly, as you can see, probably. Mm! I could wear this every day. I just don't want to go through all the trouble every day. This definitely is one of my favorite go-to looks. I'm just going to tap it in with my fingers to blur out the edges. You know, you can do anything. If you've got the shape in place, you can put in anything you want. But I do advise to do this after you've done the eyeliner. I've tried to do it after the eyeshadow before. But the problem then is that going to wipe away the product if you want to revise the shape so um no i wouldn't recommend doing the eyeshadow first i might as well just fill it in entirely just to make it slightly different from the blue one luckily this eyeliner stays in place really really nicely in october we went on a family holiday and this eyeliner came with me and i gave my three-year-old nephew a tattoo of a crocodile and it was on there for two days, maybe even three, because he refused to take a shower on that arm. He just stood in the shower with his arm out just to keep his crocodile in place. Mm. I'm going to have to go in with a teeny tiny eyeliner brush just to get that corner in beautifully. So I'm using the Tush number 30 just so that I can fine tune that missing bit in the outer corner. I'm going in with a second layer, especially around the edges because the more opaque you can make it, the more it'll stand out, especially those two really opposite shades will just flash out. I love it. I absolutely love it. I love this shadow too. It's such an easy product to work with and you can actually layer it build it to be as opaque or as sheer as you want. All right, there we go. Now, the one thing that is left to us is to do some mascara. Now, you have two choices. Obviously, you can do top and bottom, just what you want, um, or you can just do the top. Now, if you do decide to put some eyeshadow on the bottom, I would finish it off with a mascara because it just looks complete. All right, so because I've used a black eyeliner, I want to finish it off with a black mascara. So I'm going in with the Bad Girl Bang by Benefit and just coat those top lashes thoroughly. Now, because the eye area is already taking up so much attention, I kind of want to do a nothingish lip. So that will mainly be just a little bit of lip balm and a tiny smudge of lip liner. Now, because it has to be somewhat nudish, nothingish, I'm just going in with the Charlotte Tilbury Lip Cheat in Pillow Talk just to accentuate the lip line. Nothing else. Once the lip liner is on, I'm just going to go in with the Jouer Essential Lip Enhancer and coat it quite thickly, so it almost acts like a gloss. But it will sink into the lips, obviously, in a minute or 15, and then you will hardly see it anymore. Um, but your lips will be nourished, beautiful, and just like a perfect addition to this whole lip. Thing. yeah you get it all right lovies thank you so much for watching this was my video on graphic eyeliners if you like my video then please like and subscribe and i hope to see you guys next time if you have any questions please pop them down below and thank you for joining me here see ya bye